I've had several requests for zone-based firewalls, and here we go. In this topology, we've got a user representing the inside network on the left, and we've got the cloud representing the outside network, or the internet, if you will. And we'll make our two a zone-based firewall. Here's the play-by-play. -play. With zone-based firewalls, we're going to take interfaces and assign them to zones. So for example, I'll use green for friendly, and we'll circle FA00, and we'll put that in the inside zone. And then we'll take the FA0 slash 1 interface, and I'll put that in red to represent not so friendly, and I'll make that outside. Once we assign those two interfaces to those zones, which we'll do here in a demo in just a moment, no traffic can flow through them. Is that safe? This is safe because the user can't get to the internet and the internet can't get to the user. Super, super safe. What's the problem? Well, the challenge is the user can't get to the internet. So what do we do to solve that? What we can do is we can set up a policy that says as traffic tries to go from the inside to the outside, inspect it. What does inspection do for us? Traffic that is inspected, this user's traffic specifically as it's going out to an internet resource, if it's inspected, when the server responds and the traffic tries to come back in, because the stateful inspection or the stateful database has a record of this user going out to that resource and is tracking things like the sequence numbers and everything else in the TCP headers and ports and so forth, the return traffic is allowed. It's magic. It's wonderful. This is supported on ASAs. It's how they live. And it's also supported on routers, as in zone-based firewalls, as well as context-based access control. Think of inspection like this. This user is in an amusement park, and the user wants to go out to the parking lot. Well, they go out to the parking lot, they try to get back in, how are they going to get back in? Well, for an amusement park, we stamp your hand. Think of inspection as a hand stamp. So the user goes out to the internet, stops here for a moment, gets their hand stamped, traffic goes out, the return traffic comes back in because it's in the stateful inspection database. That's it. So here, what we're going to do in this example is we're going to create these zones, create a service policy for traffic that's initiated from the inside to the outside, inspect it so it can come back. We'll also do some rate limiting as well just to demonstrate how that can fall in. Go ahead and copy this um, and then or print, screen print it, whatever, or draw it out. And that way, as we're configuring it, you can know exactly what's going on and which device we're on. To test, first of all, let's go to R1 and let's just do a couple of tests. Let's do a, a ping to R3. If I ping to R3, take a notice of what's happening. We're doing DNS resolution. The DNS server is out on the outside internet, outside network. It's actually R3 doubling up as a DNS server. So UDP is working. ICMP is working to the outside because we're getting responses back. And we can also Telnet to verify that TCP is working. So we'll Telnet out to R3, and that's working like a champ. So we've demonstrated Telnet, ICMP, and UDP from the inside network, R1, to the outside network. No problem whatsoever. R2 is not configured as a zone-based firewall yet. Let's do that right now. For the purpose of learning, I'm going to put the full config in, and then I will walk you through each of the steps. And that way, it won't be a typing exercise, and we can focus on the content and what works. So I'm going to take this from a notepad and pump it in, and then we'll go through each of the steps. The very first thing that we've done here is we've created a class map type inspect. A class map does one thing for a living. It says, I identify things. You know, they call them a class map because they're classifiers. It's looking for elements. This class map is looking for TCP, ICP, and UDP. Watch the keyword here, match any. If you don't put match any in, it's match all. And if accidentally you did this, it would be trying to match a single packet that was TCP, ICP, and UDP all at the same time never going to match, so be careful. Also, the keyword inspect or type inspect indicates that this is a class map for special purpose use with zone-based firewalls. Then we create a policy map. That's the action. That's the enforcement of something that's going to happen. This policy map called PMAP1 is calling on the services of class map1 to identify the traffic. And if it finds that traffic, it's going to inspect it. Remember, think inspect means hand stamp. End of story. Also, in addition for that traffic, that's matched by class map CMAP1, we're going to rate limit down to 8,000 bits per second as per the highlighted line. Then we're going to create our security zones. Check this out. We need to put this interface, FA00 in inside, FA01 outside. It's a two-step process. One, we need to create the security zones. So that's what we've done right here. That creates the security zone called inside. This creates the security zone called outside. There's no members yet, but the zones exist. 
now we assign the interfaces to those zones. So we go to FA00 and say you're a member of inside. We go to FA01, you're a member of outside. Piece of cake. Then last but not least, probably the most important part, we're going to create a zone pair. A zone a pair is a unidirectional relationship about traffic that's initiated off one interface going out another interface. What do I mean by that? Check it out. This user, as she sends traffic or he sends traffic out to the internet, that traffic is going to come in on FA00, which we've identified as the inside. It's going to go out FA01, which we've identified as the outside. So a zone pair, simply a relationship for traffic that's going sourced on inside from a user, for, for example, destined for the outside based on the routing table of this router. That's all there is to it. So we create this zone pair. I gave it a name. I called it inside to outside. You could call it Bubba or my zone pair one or whatever you wanted to name it. But I told it, I said the source is the inside. Any interfaces that belong to the inside, here we just have one. And the destination is any interfaces that belong to the outside. In a bigger environment, it's very convenient to have three or four interfaces, all members of a zone, and that way you can basically implement your policy without visiting every single interface. Here we have simply two interfaces, two zones, pretty straightforward. Here's the magic of applying the policy map. We created the policy map earlier called PMAP1 up here that says to go ahead and inspect the traffic, which is ICMP, TCP, or UDP, um, and this is how you apply it to that zone pair. So once you create the zone pair, it puts you into zone pair configuration mode as highlighted, and you just type in service policy, type inspect, and the name of your layer of your policy map type inspect you created earlier. And that's it. Now let's test it. Let's go to R1, and from R1, let's tell net to R3. So DNS is still working, and also the uh, telnet is still working. But I'll tell you what isn't going to be so happy. If we do a ping to R3, and we repeat it 100 times, take a look at this. I mean. Previously, we might not even know zone-based firewalls working, but take a look at this. We are exceeding the 8,000 bits per second, and well, we're exceeding the amount of traffic that's exceeding that is not being sent through R2, and so we're getting timeouts. So I'm going to do a, a Control Shift 6 X to pause that, or actually Control Shift 6 will break that, and let's go take a look at the firewall itself. In fact, let's open up one more Telnet session. I'll Telnet to R3, and I'll do a Show Tech Support which will generate a whole bunch of traffic. So this is R1, Telnet to R3. That way on R2 we can take a look at that information. The key to seeing all of this information is show policy map, type inspect, zone pair. And you can also type in sessions as well, which I'll do. I'll add the sessions keyword. There's a lot of options. But let's take a look at this, what it's showing us. So let me scroll up so you can see it with me. And I want to make sure I'm staying in the 10 minute limit here. So I have show policy map, type inspect, zone pair sessions. It's showing me the policing. Right now I have conformed 191 packets and exceeded 27 packets. Those are the drops I had from R1 a moment ago. I have my policy map that's matching on TCP. And I also have my um, policy map that's showing my matching on ICMP. And for TCP, it's related to sessions. Um, because I actually telneted twice, that's representing two sessions that went across. The established session that's in place right now is right here. It's saying that the host 10001, source port 13741, went to TCP port 23, telnet, at 23.0.0.3. And the UDP matches were my DNS requests across the way. So what I've actually done is I set up, we have set up zone-based firewalls and implemented a policy based on a design. And by the way, that's where you shall we start, having a reason to do something. So in summary, this user can now go out to the internet safely, well, moderately safely. She can get to, or she can get to TCP resources, UDP resources, and ICMP. All that traffic will come back in through, which is great. But if somebody on the outside tries to initiate a connection, inbound to this user, it won't make it. We have time enough for that one demo. Let's go to R3 and let's try doing a ping of R1. R1's at 10.0.0.1 and that will fail because R2 is going to deny it. So on R3, show IP route. We have a route to uh, the 10 network right here and we'll simply ping 10.0.0.1 but by default the zone-based firewall is dropping that because there's no policy from outside to inside that's permitting that initial traffic. Thanks everybody for watching and have a great, great day.